I'm Susan and I'm from Ohio Energy Project and today we're going to talk about matter. But even more specifically, we're going to take, talk about the states of matter. So first of all, matter is anything that takes up space and has weight. And in here I have some ice, which is frozen water or solid water. Here I have liquid water and here I have a glass that looks empty, but it's full of gas and that gas is air. So we have the three states of matter or the phases of matter right here in front of me. So I'm gonna clear these away and we're gonna talk about those phases in a little bit more detail. Okay, so what's the difference between a solid, a liquid, and a gas? Well, the first thing is that the particles vibrate in place in, with low energy if it's a solid. So they're still moving because everything is moving, but they vibrate just a tiny bit. And a liquid, it's a little bit faster, so it vibrates at medium speed, and they can flow past each other, the particles. And finally, in a gas, a gas, the particles vibrate very fast with a high amount of energy, and they can go all over. So knowing that, that's going to lead us to the shape. So the shape of a solid is, the word that we're gonna call it is definite. Solids have a definite shape. Liquids take the shape of a container. So we're gonna call that an indefinite shape. Gases also have an indefinite shape. And this is because the particles can flow past each other. So we're going to take a little break from the wall chart and we're gonna do a little bit of a demonstration. Right here, we have three different sizes as well as three different shape containers. So what we're going to do to demonstrate the indefinite shape of the container for liquids is we're going to put the exact same amount in each one of the containers. So in the first one, we're going to put in just about to the top. Okay. For the second one, we're going to put in the same amount, and I've got to move in very carefully. Same amount as the first. And when I pour it in, take the shape of the container but notice that it looks like it has less but it's the exact same amount because I measured it and finally in the third one I measure the same amount and this time I'm going to use my funnel because it has a small opening Same amount. This one looks full, this one is partly, and this one's way down on the bottom. Remember when we started, we introduced matter as having um, mass and volume. So let's talk about, we talked about the shape of each one of these phases. Here we're going to talk about the volume. So when we have a solid, we have a definite volume. We can't change it. We can't take a block of wood and squish it together and make it any different. The shape is always the same. The same thing for a liquid. The shape is the same. Sorry, I did mess that up. A liquid also has the same volume. And I think you may have experienced that sometime if you've gone to a swimming pool and you dive in and you do a belly smacker. That water doesn't want to give, it has that volume and it just stays there. Finally, we have a gas, and a gas has an indefinite volume. And that's why you can blow up a balloon with different um, shapes and different sizes, and then you have a different volume for a gas. Gases can be compressed, which is why when you have your propane tank in the backyard, it feels so heavy because the gas of propane 
is compressed so much that the particles come so close together that it becomes a liquid. Okay, so we can change one phase to another, and you all know those phases, but let's review them. If I go from a solid to a liquid, we call that melting. Okay. Think about something that you know that melts. One of my favorite things that melts is chocolate in my mouth. What about if I go from liquid to a gas? Well, that's happening outside all the time when water evaporates or when your mom cooks on the stove and you see those, those bubbles and we call that boiling. Now the opposite can happen too. And this is happening outside now, even as we speak. The water is evaporating and it goes up into the atmosphere and it forms a cloud. And we call that condensation. When it rains, we have a liquid and if it's cold enough, that liquid can freeze and turn into a solid. So, where's the energy? Well, in order for all these phases to change, you have to have energy. Remember that those particles in a solid have low energy, but a liquid has medium energy. So for a solid to melt to a liquid, you have to put energy in the system. For a liquid, which has medium energy, to go to a gas, which has high energy, again, you have to put energy in. Going in the other direction, the opposite happens. When it has a gas for high energy, and the material condenses to a liquid, energy is released, so energy goes out. And when we have liquid, medium energy, going to a solid, low energy, again, energy goes out. Thank you for watching um, Ohio Energy Project's information on solid liquids and gases. What kind of solids and liquids and gases can you find around your home? Thanks for watching.